Alia Hartugut, Elau Gavin, O Blumi Gadim, Nonia Katin, Angadio Tigluta. We are happy you have joined us today. May God bless you as we worship together. Tamapta Imnaitun, Ulu Nau Hima Vaktugut, Ihu Maptigun, Angri Nakhuta, Atangu Plu, Quanakitibut, Ili Vakta Galawangit, Tafumungala, Tafumunga Jesus. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the sin of all of us. Jesus is the way to my Father's house, to my Father's house, to my Father's house. Jesus is the way to my Father's house, where there's joy, joy, joy. Jesus at good time and good tempting noon, and good tempting Jesus Piblo go over God Talvangani Inuhigi Kubluta Ilumo Domik Nagoyo Miglo Atkin Alionakto Piblo go Amen. O God Inuit Anatevarapkin Jesus Christikun Over God Wanachevarapta Ilvin 
i huma gyuniak vigiluta. I ka yukti gud, o god, na go vadli alak kubluta, inu hipting ni talvanganin, Jesus piblogo, apaki giptigin. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wrongdoing. Amen. Atangum Kangauta Angu Tikput Kilang Mitutin Adkin Nagogi Auri Atangovin Kaili Ihu Martin Tamaliuli Nunami Kilang Mitutun Ublumi Nakihap Tingnik I talk to good Wenako Tip Tingnik Ihu Maguna Glutin Uva Gut Tau Ihu Malok Tigi Figap Tikin Wanachi Igavut, Oktok Tau Negmon, Hivudle Tailuta, Tupi Lagmin, Anau Tiktigut, Ilvin Piutiki Gapkin, Atangovic, Hakogingna, Kaumaneglo, Nungolaitumon, Tang. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Markham Gospelinger Nakata one fourteen min twenty two mum Kulani ninety seven Talva Jan Piahaktid Luko Jesus Galilee mun tikiptu Ili Hauji Bluni Gardim Unip Kau Tainik Okakuni Pivikhak Tikutunek Tok Gardim Atangovia Kagilengman Ihumaliok Higiti Okpekaklo Hilo Onip Kangmun Nagoyumun Galilim Tahiata Hina Tigun Pihukami Jesusim Tautuktaik Simon Tafumalo Nuka Andrew Koviak Tuk Tidlogik Ikluchio Tiogamik Tapquak Jesusim Okadlau Tiai Malik tinga elliptic, inochiok tingo tiniaraptic. Tajaina glu, koviaptic, kimachogit, maligaholaptak. Kanil gulmun, aulamirami, tautuktaik, James, Zebedee, Engniga, John Lu, tafuma nuka. Umiang mitid lugi, koviatic, Hava Hogit Tajaina Glu, Jesusim, Kait Komagik, Tap Quark, Angutik, Zebedee, Kivgai Glu, Umiangmi, Kimak Taik, Malik Kublugi Tap Kualo, Kapernamun, Tikin Namik, Sabbath Mutid Logo, Tajaina Jesus Atog Vingmun, Itakami, Ili Hauji Yoyo. In Widlo Tafuma Ili Hauju Tain, Idli Gutau Tigiain, Ili Haujing Nangman, Akoging Nakap Tutun Ili Bluni, Audla Bluni Lo Titigaktinin. Amen. The Gospel of St. Mark, Chapter 1, reading from verse 14 to verse 22. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and they followed him. When he had gone a little farther, 
he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Amen. to help us to understand what we are talking about this morning. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to open our hearts and our minds, to be prepared to learn from your word and to know that you love and care for each one of us and that the message of the cross is that anyone can come to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Jesus, a familiar name. His name is on the lips of many, many people every day. Unfortunately, some people use the name of Jesus as a swear word. Other people speak of Jesus with respect and honour because they know who he is from his word, the Bible. Books have been written about Jesus and many books will continue to be written. Films, both good and bad, have been produced about Jesus. And all over the world, millions of people have committed and continue to commit their lives to him on a regular basis. And yet we also have to be honest and acknowledge that there are many people who have no time for Jesus. They have no interest in him at all. But it is also true that in some countries in the world, people are persecuted and denied basic human rights because they will not compromise their faith in Jesus. 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 The most wonderful name that we know. Why have people throughout the years, throughout the centuries, why have they been attracted to the Lord Jesus, the most amazing person who has ever lived? Did you know, and I'm sure you did, 
that we begin to learn about Jesus in the Old Testament. That was why I read that short reading from the book of Isaiah this morning. This fact surprises some people, but it's wonderfully true. For example, we read about the coming of Jesus in Isaiah chapter 9 and Isaiah chapter 11. And in Isaiah chapter 53, we learn about his ministry of how he was going to suffer and die. Of course, there is much more about Jesus in the Old Testament. Even though the name of Jesus is not used, Jesus is mentioned in many, many parts of the Old Testament. And that's one of the reasons why we ought to be reading the Old Testament, because we're learning, learning so much about Jesus in what we call prophecy looking forward to the future, looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus. When we read the New Testament, as we all know, especially the four Gospels, we are immediately in the presence of Jesus. Oh yes, the Bible is the most important book for learning about Jesus. We can read books about Jesus, we can watch films about Jesus, and as I've said, many are good, many are not so good. But if we really want to know about Jesus, we have to read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And so for a few moments, let us take a closer look at the life of Jesus. One of the reasons that people were attracted to him was because he made God very, very real to people. Before Jesus came and even during the ministry, the earthly life of Jesus, the religious leaders were so wrapped up in themselves that they forgot about the people they were supposed to serve in the name of God. But Jesus, when he came, he loved and he cared. His life was wonderfully, wonderfully attractive. He spoke about God in a way that people could understand him. Why else would hard-working fishermen give up their way of life to follow him? That is what we read about from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, just a few moments ago. And so will you, with me, try to imagine what life must have been like for those fishermen whom Jesus called. He said, come and follow me. Come and follow me. Just a few words. And these words were to have an incredible impact on the lives of those few fishermen who heard him speak these words. These fishermen, they were living ordinary lives, working hard to support themselves and their families. Good living men who expected nothing unusual to happen as they worked and lived from day to day. No doubt they believed in God. But perhaps just like so many people today, believing in God was something that you did, but it didn't really have or doesn't really have much impact on everyday life. Their lives were probably just like ours in so many ways, even though they lived so long, long ago. And yet something remarkable, something unusual and life changing was about to happen. A person they knew very little about. He saw them. He called them to immediately give up their fishing occupation to follow him. And that in itself is remarkable. A person that they knew very little about. He saw them and he called them to immediately follow him. He spoke to them a message that I'm sure they probably didn't understand. And yet, what did they do? 
Well, in verse 18 of Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, we read, At once, immediately, right away, they left their nets and they followed him. I wonder if I would have responded in the same way. If I had been one of those fishermen, I hope I would. Because these fishermen, they set us an amazing example. They didn't fully understand who Jesus was. We know that as we read on in the four Gospels. And yet they left their nets and followed him. Why would hardworking men suddenly leave everything that they knew and felt comfortable with, giving it all up to someone they didn't know or fully understand or what they were being called to do? He said, I'll make you fishers of men. I don't think that they fully understand what Jesus was saying when he spoke these words. But they left everything in order to follow the Lord Jesus. Were they looking for a change in their lives? Were they bored with what they were doing? I don't think so. Had Jesus not called them, they would have continued as fishermen, which was a very honest and a good way to earn a living and to go about living their daily lives, interacting with families and friends. But Jesus said, come and follow me. Now, one of the first disciples, we learn this from here, was Simon Peter. What an interesting pers person Simon is. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. But Peter, you know, when I think about Peter, and I often do, as a follower of Jesus, we can learn a lot from him about ourselves and what it means to be a Christian. The first thing that we learn is Jesus accepted Peter just as he was. He didn't have a list of rules and regulations and tick them off one at a time and then say, OK, you're good enough. You're acceptable to come and follow me. Jesus saw him with his brother Andrew and he said, come just as you are. But you know, because you've heard this, I'm sure, many times, even from me, that Jesus says, come just as you are, but he doesn't leave us. He doesn't want to leave us just as we are. Because Jesus saw what Peter could become if he followed and obeyed the way of Jesus. All we know from reading of the Gospels, that Peter had a lot of learning, a lot of growing to do as he began to follow Jesus. I think Peter was just a little bit like me, maybe like some of you listening today, a slow learner. But Jesus never, never, never gave up on him. It was Peter who reacted strongly when Jesus talked about He's going to die. It was Peter who objected to Jesus washing his feet. It was Peter who denied knowing Jesus three times on the night before the crucifixion. Oh yes, Peter made mistakes. He sinned, but Jesus loved and forgave him. And Peter learned from his mistakes, just as we can learn from the mistakes that we make. Even the mistakes that we make, the sins that we commit as followers, as disciples of the Lord Jesus. One of the most important lessons that Peter and the other disciples learned was a lesson that we all have to accept 
if we are to be faithful disciples. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 28, we read, Peter said, we have left everything. We have left everything to follow you. They had to leave, just as we have to leave, that old way of life in our commitment to follow him. You see, being a disciple of Jesus is a seven day a week commitment. It's a 52 weeks of the year commitment. It's a life that comes with many challenges, but a way of life that has many rewards and blessings. As Peter grew closer to Jesus, Peter became a strong and well-known leader in the early church after the crucifixion, after Jesus had returned to his Father in heaven and the Holy Spirit came. Peter became a very strong and powerful leader. He preached a powerful sermon on the day of Pentecost. He did miracles in the name of Jesus. And this fisherman, he was to write two letters, one and two Peter, that are in the New Testament. From Jesus calling Peter, we know that Jesus calls ordinary people to follow and serve him. It's got nothing to do with how clever you are, whether you've been to college or university. It doesn't matter what your work is. Jesus calls ordinary people to follow and serve him. Jesus has the power to change and to transform the most unlikely people. People like Peter, Andrew, James and John and all the other disciples who never thought for one moment that they would leave the ordinary work that they were doing. Jesus saw them. He saw the potential in their lives. Jesus changed their lives. They were committed to Jesus. They obeyed the way of Jesus. Jesus is calling people. He called even me. Now, Peter did not become perfect, but he did commit his whole life to the Lord Jesus. And Peter became and continues to be a remarkable example of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Peter became, as I've already said, a wonderful example and leader in the early church. And so, are you longing for a new way of life? Freedom from habits that are dragging you down and perhaps making you feel worthless? You want a new direction in your life. You want to be useful, but most of all, you want to be loved. You want your life to be different from the what it is at the present moment. Whoever you are, and however you are living, there is a new and a better way. It is the way of Jesus, whose life was so attractive that it caused people like Peter, like Andrew, like James and John and all the other disciples and many, many, many other people we read about in the New Testament to follow him. And so I hope that as you read the Gospels, as you read your Bible, that you will grow in your understanding of how attractive the life of Jesus was and of how attractive his life continues to be. The Lord Jesus bless you and keep you in his love and care every day. And so we say 
Thank you, Jesus, that your life was so attractive that people gave up everything in order to follow you. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Gadluta, Kulani thirty five Nuhativud, Inuhativud, Peblugit Atenek, Hanu Gavin, Tamak Tingnik, Iliharia Yugut Ekuptigut, Uvogut, Nagogi Koblugit, Inuhativud, Nuhativud Lu, Ovaptitun Nuhativud, Peblugit, Kengaptigut, Tamapta Inukatigit kubluta na goyumik nunap tingni. Kovia kutigilutalo uvap tingni pit kuyatin. Malitak hau kublugit inuktiglu. Nayuktik kublugit ekyuk hemaitumik taima apakigiptigin. Amen. Kulani 37. Aniak piblugit. Ayu hai tutin tukulai to tiglo god. Ilvin enikwa luk kun nagohik kak pagatin. Aniak himayun in gilgam. Taja kengauti kengauti jokot. Anya langman. Nagli lugo nagligi lugo una atanek tama ikayuk tauluni ilimnun. Nagohile kublugo timimigun. Jesus Christ ikon ateniptigon. Amen. Kulani 32. Hakogikti tau kubluta. God nunga laitok hanavagaptigon. Hakoging nepkon anautigluta. Kovio kotikon hevliuktigot. Akugik tilutalo anengnikon nagoyukun, tamapta tunikubluta ilingun, uvapting nilo, kovia kutigiluta, ikuyuktigilutalo, Jesus Christ ikun. Amen. O God our Father, we do pray for our neighbours, for the people who live on our street, in our community. 
we pray that our lives will be an example of your life. We pray that many, many people will not only hear about Jesus, but from our lives will want to say, I want to know Jesus and follow Jesus as you do. And I pray, Lord Jesus, for a mighty outflow of your Holy Spirit upon the community of Kuglotok, that many people will be attracted to the Lord Jesus, that many people will commit their whole lives to him and know the joy, the peace, the love and the freedom that he can bring, that he wants to bring to people as they surrender themselves completely to him, to his way of life. We pray, Lord Jesus, for people who are sick in the community. We thank you for the ministry of the doctors and nurses, for all who are a part of the health centre. We pray for your healing touch upon those who are in a special need of prayer today. We pray for those who struggle with addictions. Oh Lord Jesus, we pray for them to realise that they can be set free and delivered from that which is causing them to be so unhappy. Lord Jesus, you have said, come to me all you who are burdened with the worries and the cares and the troubles of this life, and I will give you a new life. I will give you rest. And so, Lord Jesus, we pray for a deeper commitment to you. We pray that whatever our work may be, be it in the home, be it in an office, be it in a store, wherever we work, Lord Jesus, wherever we live, that we will be totally committed to you. Oh, we pray, Lord Jesus, for the power of your Holy Spirit to come upon every home, upon every person in Kugluktuk, that it be a place, a community, where people know that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he loved each person so much that he died on the cross for them and that he is alive today and that he can be known through the Holy Spirit. And so thank you, Jesus, that we can say we worship the risen Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Dadim, Lao Gutata, Atlang Night to Galawak, Managilukit or Matihi, Ehuma Hilo, Jesus Sim Ilihimaningagun, Kobe Kota Goodlo, Godim Ayok Haitum, Angu Tipta, Aningata, and Nangnim Nagoyum, Nagogok Tininga, Ilitfingi Himali Tanunga. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.